Hi guys and welcome to section 3 of this course where we'll be looking at high availability. In this section, we'll be looking at the Amazon Simple Queue service, Amazon SQS, Amazon Simple Notification Service, Amazon SNS, Elasticity and Scalability, Scaling RDS Databases, Multi-Regional Scaling, and High Availability Strategies for Networking and Connectivity. In this video, we'll be looking at the Amazon SQS Building Decoupled Architecture, which is part of the High Availability Domain. So, let's get started. Okay, so in this video, we'll be taking a look at Amazon SQS and how to build decoupled architecture. So what is SQS? Quite simply, Amazon Simple Queue Service is a fully managed message queuing service that makes it easy to decouple application components, each performing a discrete function, which improves scalability and reliability and is best practice design for modern applications. Okay, so let's take a look at Simple Queue Service in a bit more detail. So it offers you a fully managed queuing service that enables you to build solutions designed for high availability and fault tolerance. It offers a secure, durable, and highly available hosted queue that lets you integrate and decouple distributed software systems and components. Essentially, you do not need to build your own messaging system, which obviously will come with overheads such as having to manage software and hardware infrastructure. It enables you to decouple components of your applications such that they're not dependent on each other and can run and fail independently. When building systems in the cloud, very often you need to design multi-tier architecture for different components of your applications. Using Amazon SQS, you can decouple the application components to offer higher levels of resilience, fault tolerance, availability, and build a distributed solution. You can access and configure the Amazon SQS service using the SQS console, the AWS command line interface, and the SDKs. Okay, so to better understand how SQS actually works, we'll take a look at some illustrations of a typical multi-tier architecture and how we can extend the resilience, fault tolerance, and scalability of that architecture using SQS. Let's take a look at the next diagram. So this is a typical multi-tier architecture solution. And as you can see, we've built several components within this architecture to offer resilience, failover capabilities, and fault tolerance. So, for instance, we have an elastic load balancer that sits in front of a fleet of EC2 instances, ensuring that traffic only goes to the healthy instances. With our fleet of EC2 instances, we can see that those instances are spread across multiple availability zones, such that if a particular availability zone fails, we can continue operations in the alternative availability zone. In addition to that, our instances are actually part of an autoscaling group, ensuring that we handle incoming traffic and load on our EC2 instances such that we expand our fleet or contract our fleet as and when demand dictates it, ensuring at the same time that we keep costs to a minimum. At the back end, we have an RDS database system configured with multi-AZ so that we can fail over from the master database to a slave copy should there be a problem with the master RDS database. Now, this particular architecture does lend itself well to being fault tolerant and enabling services to be highly available. However, let us for a moment imagine that this is an e-commerce application where orders are being processed and then committed to a database in the back end. Now, it is possible that due to bursts or spikes in orders, that those workflows and those requests may not be committed to the database in the back end as a result of certain bottlenecks such as network issues. Now, if that happens, the orders will not be processed correctly, which will result in customer complaints and potentially loss of business. Now, Amazon SQS can be introduced into this architecture to improve the ordering process. So, let's introduce SQS into this mix. Using a queue enables orders to be stored as messages, which can then be held temporarily should outages occur, such as those network issues. Once systems are back up and running again, messages or orders can be retrieved from the queue and then processed along, thus creating a more resilient environment to ensure that orders are not lost. So as you can see, we have introduced Amazon SQS into this architecture with queues separating out the web tier from the app tier. Now, as orders come into this environment, they will be held temporarily in the queue and then only retrieved and processed by the app tier as and when there's sufficient capacity to handle those orders. These orders will not get lost and will subsequently in due course be committed to the database. Furthermore, depending on the volume of incoming orders, auto-scaling services in the app tier can launch and terminate EC2 instances in response to CloudWatch triggers, thus ensuring maximum availability while being cost-effective. With this new design, 
you are now able to scale web applications front-end independently from the processing nodes in the back-end. The front-end application can continue to scale based on metrics such as CPU usage or the number of requests hitting the load balancer, and the processing nodes can scale based on the number of orders in the queue. Furthermore, if there are any transactional failures, we also have a mechanism to move them to another queue called the dead letter queue for further analysis and debugging while still ensuring that your normal order processing continues to flow. Now, it is not necessary to be limited to just one single Amazon SQS queue. Let's take a look at the next diagram. So we have multiple queues in this diagram. With Amazon SQS in the mix, you can now easily adapt to changes in business requirements. For example, you can use Amazon SQS to create multiple queues to enable prioritization of your ordering process. Imagine if you wish to implement a priority system where orders placed over $1,000 are to be handled with higher priority. You could introduce a new priority queue. This will not disrupt the standard workflow process between the web tier and the app tier other than ensuring that orders that enter the higher priority queue get processed before those that enter the standard queue. Next, let's take a look at how we can use the Amazon Simple Notification Service with Amazon SQS. So, Amazon Simple Notification Service, Amazon SNS, is a push-based messaging system that can not only be used to send out alerts such as email notifications when components fail, but also used to send messages to different SQS queues. For our example, this can enable parallel asynchronous processing of customer orders, which can then be extended out to different related components of our application. This process of extending a message to multiple parallel queues is also known as the fanout scenario. And as shown in the diagram, customers' orders coming in from the front-end web service can then send SNS messages to a topic, which can then be replicated and pushed out to multiple SQS queues and Lambda functions for processing. Okay, so I hope all of these illustrations have gone on to showcase exactly how you can use Amazon SQS to ensure that your application architecture in the cloud is designed with a lot more resilience. Next, let's take a look at some key points for SQS. And firstly, you need to remember that SQS allows you to decouple different components of an application so that they can work independently of each other. An SQS queue can enable one application component to send messages to another application component, effectively acting as a buffer to ensure that components don't get overloaded. For example, web servers sending too many requests to backend servers can lead to system failures. A queue system will allow you to hold messages for a short duration of time so that the application servers can retrieve and process them when there's sufficient capacity. Amazon SQS is designed to deliver messages at least once. Amazon SQS offers both standard and FIFO queues, otherwise known as first and first out queues, and we'll take a look at this in a couple of slides. Amazon SQS supports multiple writers and readers interacting with the same queue. Amazon SQS is highly scalable and designed to always be available due to the fact that it's distributed across multiple nodes and data center facilities. And finally, messages can be held in the queue for a maximum of 14 days and the default setting is four days. Next, let's take a look at some cool features for Amazon SQS. Firstly, we have the at least once delivery concept. So, Amazon SQS will store copies of messages across multiple servers and multiple facilities to offer redundancy and high availability. Now, it is possible that a server hosting a copy of the message might be unavailable when you receive or delete a message. And this can result in the application component retrieving a message that was already processed again. To ensure that this does not affect your application adversely, ensure that you design your solution to be item potent. Next, let's take a look at short polling versus long polling. So what is short polling? Short polling involves sampling a subset of servers from which messages are retrieved. Thus, some messages may still remain in the queue on different servers that were not polled in the initial request, for example and subsequent polling will then retrieve all the remaining messages. However, the downside to that is that short polling can be CPU intensive for your application. We also have long polling. Long polling helps to reduce the cost of using Amazon SQS by eliminating the number of empty responses and allowing SQS to wait until a message is available in the queue before sending a response. Next, we have something called the visibility timeout period. Now, this is the period from when a message is received by an application component till when it is processed and then deleted from the queue. During this period, the message is in a locked state. In other words, it is made invincible to the rest of the application so that no two components try to receive and process the same message. Now, Amazon SQS needs to have a visibility timeout period due to its nature of being highly distributed 
as it cannot guarantee that a component actually receives the message, for example, due to connectivity or component failure issues. If a component fails to process the message after receiving it, the visibility timeout will expire and another component can then receive and process the same message. Now the default visibility timeout period for a message is set to 30 seconds and the maximum is 12 hours. Now there's an exam tip I'd like to leave with you on this particular slide, which is that when an application needs more time to process a message, the visibility timeout can be changed using the change message visibility operation dynamically. Okay, next, let's talk about the type of queues that you can use with Amazon SQS. And there are actually two types of queues available with SQS. You have the standard queue and the FIFO queue. We'll start by taking a look at the standard queue, which in fact is the default queue used with SQS. Now, standard queues offer nearly unlimited number of transactions per second and offer at least once message delivery. What that means is that due to the distributed nature of SQS, it is possible that one of the components may not be available that contains one of those messages. Now, your application, once it has processed a message, is supposed to delete the message from the queues. Given the fact that one of the components may not have been available at the time that your application was processing the, that particular message, it is likely that when that component comes back online, that your application will once again receive the same message. So your application needs to be intelligent enough to handle the fact that messages can be delivered more than once. In addition to that, you should note that standard queues do not guarantee the ordering of the messages and offer best efforts ordering only. What that means is that the order of the messages can be out of sync. Once again, your application needs to be able to handle this type of a situation by adding sequencing information to each message so that you can reorder the message when they are received. Next, we have the FIFO queue, which stands for first in, first out queue. And with FIFO queues, what you can ensure is that the order of the message delivery is preserved. You also get exactly once processing, which basically means that no duplicates of messages are introduced into the queue. FIFO queues allow you to meet various business use cases where you need to ensure that the message order is preserved. For example, preventing a student from enrolling into a course before registering an account. There are some limitations to the FIFO queue, however. For example, it only supports up to 300 messages per second without batching and up to 3,000 messages per second with batching. Now, a dead letter queue is a special queue designed to help you isolate messages that could not be processed. Source queues can then target and send messages that can't be processed to this dead letter queue. We also have a read drive policy which specifies the source queue, the dead letter queue, and the conditions under which Amazon SQS will move messages if a consumer of the source queue fails to process the message after a specified period of time. For example, if the source queue has a read drive policy with a maximum receive count set to 5, and the consumer of the source queue receive a message 5 times without ever deleting it, Amazon SQS can then move that message into the dead letter queue for further debugging. Let's look at some key points for our dead letter queue. The dead letter queue of a FIFO queue must also be a FIFO queue. The dead letter queue of a standard queue must also be a standard queue. Dead letter queues must be created in the same region as the other queues that use the dead letter queue. And finally, the expiration of a message is always based on its original NQ timestamp. When messages are moved to the dead letter queue, the NQ timestamp will remain unchanged. For example, if a message spends two days in the original queue before being moved to a dead letter queue and the retention period for that dead letter queue is set to four days, then the message is deleted from the dead letter queue after two days. That is because it has already spent two days in the original source queue. So, you need to ensure that the retention period of a dead letter queue is set to be longer than the retention period of the original queue. Right, so that brings us to the end of this video in the course.